Welcome to the high school baseball game of the week between the Hawthorne Cougars and Londell Cardinals. We're at Cardinal Field. Chris Weishart is at the plate for the Cougars. Juan Mendez on the mound for the Cardinals. The second pitch from Mendez is a ball, 2 0. Weishart will lead off, followed by Irving Franco, Jesse Arseniega, Artis Perry, Michael Gutierrez, Jesse Sepulveda, or excuse me, Jonathan Sepulveda, Gabriel Carrillo, Luis Polanco, and Joey Garcia. 2-0 the count to Weishar. Third pitch is down low. It's a ball. For Lawndale in the field, Juan Mendez on the mound. Michael Jenks behind the plate. At first, Martin Lemus. Anthony Zapata's over at second. Jose Almanza at short. Manny Salazar at third. In the outfield, Manny Perez in left. Justin Collins in center. And Victor Gonzalez in right. So Weishar will walk on four straight. Bad start for Mendez for the Cardinals, who are three and six on the season. They lost a losing her on Wednesday, five to nothing in the game. They were shut out. Hawthorne is five and four on the year. They lost to North Torrance by two, also on Wednesday. At the plate now is Irving Franco. Franco is batting 259 on the year. Wash over first. Franco show a bunt. He'll pull it back. It's a call strike. Quick throw down to first, and Weishar is back. Michael Jenks behind the play for the Cardinals, trying to get Weishar leaning a little bit too far off the base. Juan Mendez, a sophomore pitcher for the Cardinals. Irving Franco, the senior for the Cougars. Weishar leaning a little bit too far off, and he's able to get back. Frank is showing the sacrifice, and Weishar leaning a little bit too far off. Weishar has three stolen base attempts on the year. Has not been thrown out. Just getting started here at Cardinal Field. Irving Franco in the plate for the Cougars. The called strike inside. So 0-2 is a count on Irving Franco. Senior second baseman for the Cougars, Juan Mendez, walked Chris Weishar to start the game. Now he has Franco down 0 and 2. Oh, two pitches inside, brushing Franco off a little bit. Just getting started here on Hawthorne, Londale Cable Community Channel 22. I'm Bethel Duran. Thanks for joining us here. A 1-2 pitch, Mendes sets, delivers, swung on, it's a chopper to third, and it's going to get by the third baseman Manny Salazar, Cougars on first and second base, a base hit for Irving Franco up in his average a bit. The eighth hit of the year for Franco, that'll bring up Jesse Arseniega, who's just gone off to a hot start. The senior third baseman is batting 560, got 14 hits on the year, six RBIs, four doubles. Slugging a 720. Arseniega getting off the excellent senior campaign. Got a chance to knock in a couple of RBIs. Chris Weissar at second for the Cougars. Irving Franco just reached on a base hit. Mandis checks the runners. The pitch to Arseniega. First one is a called strike. Mandis is a sophomore. Looks like he picked up some velocity from last year. There's Jesse Arsenega, third base, also pitching well for the Cougars this year. Mendes checks his runner once. He delivers 0-1 pitch inside. Call strike two. So after walking the first batter, Chris Weishaw, on four straight, Juan Mendes is battling back, had Irving Franco down 0-2. Now he has Jesse Arsenega down 0-2. We see Chris Weishaw at second with the big lead. 0-2 pitch. It's swung on a foul. Looks like there might have been some catcher's interference on the back swing. Arseniega hit the glove of catcher Michael Jenks. That'll be ruled as a catcher's interference. Arseniega goes down to first. Weishert moves over to third. Irving Franco advances to second. And here we go with no out. The Cougars are ready to jump on the Cardinals with the bases loaded here in the first just to get started. And that'll bring up Artis Perry, first baseman. 
Junior first baseman Artis Perry batting 259 in the year. Has four RBIs, three doubles. No better time than to get a couple of ribbies here with the bases loaded. Mandis checks in. The first pitch to Artis Perry is called low for a ball. Chris Washer at third for the Cougars. Irving Franco at second. Jesse Arnega at first. Base is loaded for Artis Perry at the plate. The cleanup batter trying to do just that. Clean him up against Juan Mendez. He's pitching on the mound for the Cardinals. Time is called. Just getting started here in the first inning. 1-0 is the count to Artis Perry. No runs scored yet. Next pitch by Frank by Mendez is a called strike. One and one the count to Artis Perry. Mendez looking in for a sign from his catcher Michael Jenks. The one one pitch is a called strike on the right at the knees. Juan Mendez battling back. He has Artis Perry, the cleanup hitter, down one and two. Perry looking to knock in a couple of Cougars. He had the bases loaded here in the first with no outs. The one-two pitch. Curveball's inside. Perry takes it, so it's a two-two count now. First time we see a off-speed pitch from Mendez. Two to the count. Mendez from a full windup. Looks in for a sign, the two-two pitch. It's a fastball, grounded to short. Almanza's gonna make the play over to second for one. Too late for f at first, but Artis Perry does knock in a run. Chris Weisher will score to make this one nothing Cougars here in the first. So Artis Perry will score, reach base on a fielder's choice, give him an RBI of the year. His fifth ribby so far. Irving Franco advances to the third. Jesse Arnega taken out at second on the throw from Almanza to Anthony Zapata. That'll bring up Michael Gutierrez, who's also pitching today for the Cougars. Gutierrez hitting so far this year, 407. Got 11 hits, six RBIs, one double. Gutierrez is a junior, making a good impact here early in the year for the Cougars. So one down, runners at first and third. Cougars leading the Cardinals, one nothing here in the first inning. The pitch swung on its uh, chopper foul. Irving Franco over at third. Juan Mendez on the mound for the Cardinals. In some trouble here with one out. Runners in the corners. Michael Gutierrez at the plate. He checks his swing. He did not go. Ball was in the dirt. Good block by Michael Jenks, saving a run. 1-1 one, one the count to Michael Gutierrez, who is going to go down and talk to his head coach and see what's going on here. Coach is pointing at the freeway, which is slow on a Friday afternoon, of course. That's why Lou Stowers is not here yet. But he will be. Don't worry. You'll get your full fix of Lou Stowers. Just getting going here in the first inning. Hawthorne leads Lawndale one to nothing. Runners at the corners for Juan Mendez, the pitcher for the Cardinals. Michael Gutierrez at the plate for the Cougars. One one count. That pitch is low. Two one count against Michael Gutierrez, the number five batter for Hawthorne. Juan Mendez on the mound. Looks in for a sign from Michael Jenks. Mendes sets. The 2-1 pitch is a squeeze. And Sepulveda gets it down, and that's going to knock in a run for Hawthorne. Mendes throws it away. Artis Perry is going to third. Head coach is bringing him over, and he's going to hold up Perry as Juan Mendes throws the ball away. Gutierrez gets the suicide squeeze down, give him an RBI. He reaches first on the air by Mendes. Artis Perry will go over to third. It is now 2 to nothing. Hawthorne.
the seventh RBI of the year for Michael Gutierrez, able to get the squeeze play down. Coach Jeff Hines calling the suicide squeeze for the Cougars, and it works. They're up now two to nothing. Up now for the Cougars is the catcher, Jonathan Sepulveda. They call him JP. He's a senior catcher. Sepulveda batting 360 on the year. Four RBIs, nine hits so far, and has a double. Able to knock in some more runs. That's what he's looking for. One out. The first pitch is another squeeze. Sepulveda gets it, and it will roll foul. So Jeff Hines going back to the well that worked once. Goes back to back suicide squeeze. This time Sepulveda gets the bunt down, but the ball rolls foul. And Hines is going back for a squeeze with his fastest run, Artis Perry over at first. Well, Artis is an athletic one, played quarterback for the football team. Did a lot of scrambling this year. Able to roll in. 2-0 to count. Hawthorne leads Lawndale. Sepulveda will call time. Oh, one of the counts. It's a pitch out by Londell. A quick throw down to first. And Gutierrez gets back. Another good throw by Michael Jenks down to first. It was a pitch out. As Coach May thought maybe Hawthorne was going to go for that squeeze again. Nothing doing this time. So 1-1 one, one count to J.P. Sepulveda. The pitch, he swings and fouls that one back. He's down now 1-2. and two. Sepulveda, the senior catcher, will be behind the plate for the Cougars. Really off to a hot start, batting 360 and nine games played this year. Scored one run. Has a chance of knocking another ribby here. Artis Perry is over at third. Michael Gutierrez reached on the air by Juan Mendez, but did not get a run on that suicide squeeze. That makes the score two to nothing Hawthorne. So one, two count to J.P. Sepulveda. Juan Mendez on the mound. He sets and he delivers. Curveball swung on. It's going to go through the five, six hole. Knocked down by the shortstop. And Sepulveda will knock in a run, which will make it three to nothing Hawthorne. Good stop by Jose Almanza. Had to go back. He had to use the backhand to knock that ball down by Sepulveda. He will reach on a Fielder's choice. This will be the fifth RBI of the year for Jonathan Sepulveda. Up now, Gabriel Carrillo with one out. First pitch to Carrillo is a called strike on the outside corner. Carrillo's played in seven games this year, only has one hit so far. He's one for ten. Walked three times and struck out twice. Carrillo's playing right field for the Cougars today. 3-0 Cougars here in the first. Mendes sets, checks the runner. The 0-1 pitch is swung on. It's a pop-up to the second baseman. Anthony Zapato will put that away. And make it two outs now for Londale. Coming up now will be the eighth batter, Luis Polanco. Polanco has played in nine games this year, batting 2-11. Right, three Come hits. On, Check that, four hits on 19 at-bats. He has okay, three guys, RBIs. 3-0 here in the first. Hawthorne leads Lawndale. They have runners at first and second with two outs. Lewis Polanco at the plate. Mendez sets on the mound. First pitch is a bun right back to Mendez. He's going to field it, make a throw to first, and that will retire the, the Cougars. But not after they put up three runs on two hits. Hawthorne leads Lawndale after half an inning. 3 to nothing on Hawthorne Lawndale Community Cable, Channel 22. Three nothing here in the bottom of the first. Hawthorne Cougars leading the Londale Cardinals. Londale will have a chance to put some runs of their own. They're going to lead off with Anthony Zapata, followed by Enrique Salazar. Michael Jenks will bat in the third spot. Martin Linus is cleaning it up. You'll have Gonzalez in the five spot. Juan Mendez, the pitcher, in the sixth spot. Almanza, Perez, and Collins. So 
Oh, Hawthorne able to jump on Cougars right away in the first, give some run support to their pitcher, Mike Gutierrez. Gutierrez, a junior, is having an excellent campaign on the mound. He is one and one through a complete game, has one shutout, the ERA of 2.2. He struck out six, six and he's walked three, giving up three triples, two doubles, and only six earned runs. A good start for Michael Gutierrez. Her coach Jeff Hines always able to find a good pitcher to come up through as he replaced Richard Riley, who is now pitching at El Camino College. Well, Anthony Zapata on the at the plate, the second baseman, going up against Michael Gutierrez. Gutierrez sets and delivers the first pitch. It's a ball down low in the dirt. Set the lineup up for the Cougars. Jonathan Zapolda behind the plate. Artis Perry at first. Irving Franco at second. Chris Weishar at short. Jesse Arcinega at third. As I'll Zepeda will pop one up to the left field. That'll be Luis Polanco camped under it. That'll put her away for the first out. Luis Polanco playing left. Joey Garcia in center. And Gabriel Carrillo in right. That'll bring up Enrique Salazar. Check that Manny Salazar. Salazar is playing third base for the Cardinals. Salazar wearing number four at the plate against Michael Gutierrez who delivers the first pitch and swung on. It's gonna be lying down the first base line near our cameras for foul. Mike Gutierrez on the mound for the Cougars, looking for a sign. The windup delivers. It's outside for a ball. One on one, the count to Manny Salazar, the shortstop for the Cardinals. Cardinals are, check that, third baseman for the Cardinals. Cardinals are trailing 3 0 to Hawthorne here early in the first inning. The 1 1 pitch, the off speed pitch, and Salazar fouls it back. Finds himself down 1 and 2 on the count. Hasn't been a good season for the Cardinals so far. They're three and six, are batting 220 as a team. Speaking with Coach May before the game, he said that's one of the team's biggest concerns that they're not able to get anybody on base. The one-two pitch from Gutierrez, a fastball on the outside. It's a ball. Salazar, check that, make sure to let it go by. Two-two the count. Manny Salazar at the plate. Mike Gutierrez to deliver the pitch. It's a fastball foul back. Cameraman always scared up there. Francisco's over there blinking and running away. So if the camera shaked a little bit, that was our man, Francisco, running away. Because Eric would never do that. Lou Stowers is still stuck in that traffic. I'm Bethel Duran, along with Tom Strickfadden and the great Hawthorne Cable crew. 2-2 two -two count. It's an off-speed pitch in the dirt. Salazar was swing and miss. Sepulveda picks it up. He's going to try to throw it down to first, and it will get away from Artis Perry. It'll be an error on J.P. Sepulveda. Uh, Manny Salazar will reach on a KE2. Salazar did what you're supposed to do when you swing and miss in the ball in the dirt. Keep on running. Sepulveda had plenty of time, jumped up from back there, dropped the ball, and then threw it down the line. Artis Perry couldn't handle it, and Manny Salazar hustling all the way down, gets on for the Cardinals. I'll bring up Michael Jenks, the catcher, four-year letterman for the Cardinals, left-handed hitter, try to get something going here in the first. Gutierrez checks Salazar, the pitch, off speed, and he's gonna go the other way with it to Weishart, over to second for one, down to first. And that'll get away from Artis Perry. So Jenks will reach on a fielder's choice. Manny Salazar taken out at second on the throw from Weishar to Franco. So two outs here for the Cardinals. And that'll bring up Martin Lemus. Lemus only a sophomore playing first base today for the Cardinals.
First pitch to Lemus, off-speed pitch, called strike one. So Mike Gutierrez able to mix in that curveball along with his good fastball. Head early against Martin Lemus, the sophomore first baseman. 0-1 count. Gutierrez will pick over to first, keeping Jenks honest a little bit. See Jenks and Artis Perry. At the plate, Martin Lemus. Gutierrez checks the runner at first, which is Jenks. He nods his head once. The 0-1 pitch is a pop-up to center field. Going back is Joey Garcia. He's camped underneath it, and he'll catch it and put it away for the third out. So no runs, no hits for the Cardinals here. They still trail now 3 to nothing as we go to the second inning with the Cougars leading the Cardinals 3 nothing here on Hawthorne Londo Community Cable Channel 22. Second inning here at Lawndale. Hawthorne leads the Cardinals 3 to nothing. They sent eight batters to the plate in the first inning against Juan Mendez, the pitcher for Lawndale. Scored three runs on two hits. They left two on base. They'll lead off the second with Joey Garcia. Garcia playing center field for the Cougars, num batting number nine. Garcia's batting 154 in the year, only has two hits, one RBI though. And he's k six times. Left-handed hitter going up against Juan Mendez. Their first pitch from Mendez is at the knees, called the strike. Next pitch is a bunt attempt by Garcia. He fouls it. So 0 2 now. Joey Garcia finds himself against Juan Mendez. And Garcia looks like he's going to switch over to the right side. <laughs> so he tried that bunt attempt as a left handed hitter. He, the ultimate switch hitter, switches in the middle of the at bat. So Garcia is now batting right handed with two strikes. <laughs> and he gets hit in the thigh. So Garcia took one pitch, fouled one, uh, tried to bunt one, couldn't get it down, switched to the right side of the box, and he gets hit. He'll reach on a hit by pitch by Juan Mendez. That'll bring up the leadoff hitter, Chris Weishar. Weishar led off the game with a walk, looked at four straight pitches. Weishar playing short now for the Cougars. Garcia has tried to steal twice this year, and he's been thrown out twice. Weishar shows a sacrifice, pitches in their dirt, good block by Michael Jenks. One of those account to Chris Weishar. The pitch is fouled back by Weishar. It looked like a hit and run was on for the Cougars. So Joey Garcia over at first after you get hit by the pitch by Mendez. He was in motion last one as Coach Hines put on a hit and run. And Weishar fouled it back. Pickoff attempt at first. Garcia's back easily standing up. There's Joey Garcia at first. Chris Weishar at the plate. Mendez on the mound. He sets. The pitch. It's in the dirt. It looked like Weishar win. Michael Jenks blocks it. Throw down a second. And he nails the runner, Joey Garcia. What a play by Michael Jenks going down and getting the ball. In the dirt, blocked it off his chest, picked it up, and pounced on it, making a nice, strong throw, and throw out Joey Garcia at second. Third time this year, Garcia has been thrown out. He's not reached second at all. So, like that, 2 4 on put out from Jenks to the second baseman, Anthony Zapata. So, one out and two strikes on Quith Weishar. The 0 2 pitch is in the dirt again. This time it's a ball. So it's one two is a count, or two two is a count to Chris Weishar. Up against Juan Mendez, one out here in the top of the second inning. The two two pitch, off speed pitch, it's gonna be a chopper down third base line. Salazar's gonna pick it up and he's not gonna have a chance. As that's a base hit for Chris Weishar. Good pitch by Juan Mendez, able to get Weishar out ahead. 
hit the end of the bat and it just dribbled down the third base line. Salazar picked it up and did not have a chance on the speedy Weishar. It reaches on a base hit. Smart play by Salazar not to try to throw it away. Irving Franco at the plate now. He reached on a base hit and scored in the first inning when the Cougars put up three runs. That's what the score is right now. 3 nothing Cougars here in the top of the second. First pitch to Franco is a base hit through the second base side. Looks like Weishar is going to go to third. The right fielder, Gonzalez, bobbles it. Coach Hines will wave him to third. Going to second is Irving Franco. As the Cougars now have runners at second and third with one out. Weishar was running on the play. That's the reason Anthony Zapata was covering second. He was nobody nowhere there. Franco just put that ball right where he, Zapata would have been playing. An easy base hit. Weishar goes to third. Franco will take second on the throw. Jesse Arcinega will be the hitter for the Cougars. Six RBIs in the season has a chance to knock in two. One down. Three nothing Cougars lead here in the top of the second. The first pitch to Arcinega. It's a fastball and it's called strike one on the outside corner. Arcinega didn't quite agree with that pitch. Looking down at his coach. Pursing his lips a little bit. Arcinega's hitting 560 on the year, so it's a pretty good eye. Knows what the strike and what's not, but he's looking for a pitch he can drive right now to knock in two more runs. The 0 1 pitch to Arcinega. Fastball. That one's outside. It's a ball. Arcinega reached on catcher's interference in the first inning when he hit the glove of the catcher, Michael Jenks. The 1-1 one -one pitch, fastball, and Arcinega drills it over the second baseman's head. In comes in Weishar. Coming in is Irving Franco. He's going to be waved in, and he'll score. Jesse Arcinega with his base hit makes the score now 5 to nothing. Cougars. It was a fastball that Arcinega drilled over the second baseman's head to Zapata. Arcinega picks up two RBIs on that at bat. Make that eight RBIs total for the year for Jesse Arcinega, his 15th hit. And his 26th at bat. Arcinega is sizzling here early in the year for the Cougars. Having an excellent senior campaign. So Mendes gets a visit from his head coach, May. He's going to calm down a bit. Mendes has given up five runs on five hits early here in one and a third of innings of work against the Cougars. That'll bring up Artis Perry. Perry reached on a fielder's choice in the first and knocked in a run, also scored a run. The first pitch to Perry's in the dirt. Another good block by the catcher, Michael Jenks. Perry, who also played quarterback for the Cougars this year, playing first today for Hawthorne. Mendes checks Arcinega once. The 0-0 oh, the oh pitch is in the dirt again, 2-0. Oh. Haters count now for Artis Perry, 2-0. It oh. has a chance to drive something here. Juan Mendes on the mound. The 2-0 pitch is a fastball down the middle. That's called strike. Perry was taken all the way. Perry hitting 259 on the air. At the play with 2-1 count. 2-1 pitch. It's popped up over, over the second baseman's side. It's going to drift to the outfield. Victor Gonzalez is going to be underneath it to put it away. Make that two outs now. Perry was on it, just popped it up to the right fielder, Victor Gonzalez. I'll bring up the pitcher for the Cougars, Michael Gutierrez. Gutierrez reached first on the air by Juan Mendez, but Gutierrez knocked in a run with a suicide squeeze that Coach Hines put on to give the Cardinals a 3 nothing advantage. Gutierrez on the mound will be going out there in the second with a 5 nothing run at lead. 
So Mendez delivers the first pitch, is swung on, He's gonna get through for a base hit on the left-hand side. So Juan Mendez is getting hit around here in the second inning. That's the fourth base hit he's given up to go with the two runs. Arcinega moves over to second. Gutierrez reaches on the base hit. Two outs now, 5 nothing. Hawthorne leads Lawndale. At the plate is J.P. Sepulveda, the catcher for Hawthorne. Digs in against Juan Mendez. Sepulveda calls time. Not granted. Mendez de delivers the first pitch. A swung on line drive to the first baseman, Martin Lemus. That'll put out Sepulveda, but it doesn't matter. The damage has been done. Two runs on four hits for the Cougars, makes it now 5 nothing. Hawthorne leading Lawndale on Hawthorne Lawndale Community Cable, channel 22. Bottom of the second, Lawndale will be coming up to bat with Victor Gonzalez, Juan Mendez, and Jose Almanza trailing 5 nothing here against the Hawthorne Cougars. Cougars put up three runs in the first and they scored two on the top of the second. Four base hits. Chris Weishar and Irving Franco both scored. And that's the score now. 5 nothing here in the bottom of the second. Juan Mendes getting roughed up a little bit on the mound for the Cardinals. Mike Gutierrez had an easy first inning. Gave up no hits. Only runner reach, two runners reached as Manny Salazar reached on a K strikeout air two. And Michael James reached on a fielder's choice. No damage was done. He got Martin Lemus to pop up to center in the inning. As Gutierrez, who's a junior, looking good, impressive. He's 1-1 on the year, has a complete game and a shutout with an ERA of 2.2. You see the panoramic view of Cardinal Field. Bottom of the second. At the plate, Victor Gonzalez. Gonzalez is playing right field for the Cardinals today. First pitch to Gonzalez from Gutierrez is a swung on and missed. Strike one. Gonzalez at the play, the 0-1 pitch from Gutierrez. There's a ball outside. Just missed. One one count to Victor Gonzalez. Michael Gutierrez on the mound with a five-run lead for Hawthorne. The 1-1 one, one pitch. It's a strike. 1-2. The 1-2 pitch from Gutierrez. Off speed. Swung on. And he fouls that one back. J.P. Sepulveda now able to catch it and hold on. So Gonzalez is still alive. It was a nice off-speed pitch from Gutierrez. Been able to mix in that curveball with the fastball. 1-2 pitch. Another off-speed, another foul ball by Victor Gonzalez. He's up there battling. Another one two pitch in the dirt, two and two. So Gonzalez, the leading off the second is making Michael Gutierrez work a bit. Sepulveda looking over to his dugout for the sign. Two two count and a two two pitch. Fastball swung on again. So Gonzalez is making Gutierrez work a bit. He's fouled back three pitches. And staying alive here. That was a fastball this time from Gutierrez. He's been mixing in that off-speed pitch, a 2-2 count. Let's see what he throws here. In the windup, he delivers. Fastball is going to go foul down the first baseline. Artis Perry making a nice play, knocking it down. But just foul for Victor Gutierrez. That's four foul balls in this at-bat. Good camera work by Eric, able to follow that ball all the way down the line. Only the best here. 
Michael Taylor's on the mound. He has a batter now with Victor Gonzalez. The 2-2 pitch, off speed, and he struck out this time. Gonzalez was battling up there, knocked down four foul balls. This time, not able to catch up to the off-speed pitch. He goes down swinging, one out. That'll bring up Juan Mendez, who's on the mound for the Cardinals. Mendez getting roughed up a bit. He's giving up five runs. Going up against the counterpart, Gutierrez. The first pitch to Mendez, fastball down the pipe. Called strike one. And we have a Lou Stower sighting for all you people at home wondering what happened. He's here. The 0-1 pitch, another fastball, another strike. So Michael Gutierrez getting in the groove. Juan Mendez is taking two straight. The 0-2 pitch might be something off speed. It sure is. And Gu Mendez battles it and he fouls it into to right field. And Juan Mendez gets a base hit. He's the inside out that pitch and went with it. A base hit to right field as Juan Mendez gets on. First hit of the day for the Cardinals. That'll bring up Jose Almanza. Almanza, the shortstop for the Cardinals. Batting in the seventh spot for Londale. As the great Lou Stowers makes an arrival. Always fashionably late, but as we can see from that freeway, it's a bear to get here. As Almanza pops it up to right field, get Carrillo is there, makes the catch, a nice running catch by Gabriel Carrillo. He's, Almanza's retired, F9. So two outs, bottom of the second, Lou Stowers is here. Five nothing, Hawthorne leads Lawndale. That'll bring up Manny Perez. Perez is playing left field for the Cardinals here. His first at bat against Michael Gutierrez who's shutting down the Cardinals. So Manny Perez at the plate. First pitch he sees is a ball. Hello. Oh. Hello. So Manny Perez at the plate, 1 0. Next pitch he sees is upstairs, 2 0. So Mike Gutierrez. As Lou shows up, fashion relay, answering everybody else's phone book. 5 nothing. Hawthorne leads Lawndale. 2-0 pitch. Strike. Manny Perez now has a count of 2-1 and on him against Mike Gutierrez. So we got Jose Almanza, was retired with the fly ball to right. Juan Mendez on the base hit and Victor Gonzalez struck out. That's what happened here in the second. Five nothing Hawthorne, the two one pitch, off speed, outside. Three and one now count to Manny Perez. Perez, the left handed, left fielder, batting right handed. Trying to get something going here for Londale in the bottom of the second. We're at Londale High. Three one pitch. In the dirt, so Perez draws a walk. Good battle up there against Gutierrez. The coach's worst nightmare, two out walks. Brings up the number nine batter, Justin Collins, who's just a ninth grader. Collins patrolling center field. We saw him against losing it the other day, did pretty good. Collins has a chance to get Londale back in this game as they trail five nothing here in the bottom of the second. Juan Mendez at second. Um, Perez at first. The first pitch to Collins is a grounder to second. A one hop to Irving Franco who will throw out Collins to end the inning. And that'll do it for the Cardinals. 4-3, Collins is put out. So at the end of two complete innings, Hawthorne leads Londale 5 nothing. In the second, Londale strands two runners on one base hit. 
So we'll be back on Hawthorne Londale Community Cable Channel 22 with Hawthorne leading Londale five to nothing. Top of the third inning, Hawthorne leads Londale five to nothing. They'll send to the plate Gabriel Carrillo, Luis Polanco, and Joey Garcia. And I'm joined along with Lou Stowers. Well, good afternoon, Beto. Oh boy, it's another beautiful day here. And uh, that wind coming in right onto our faces here. So Carrillo playing right field, popped up to second, sees the first pitch from Mendez, down low for a ball. Carrillo wears those stirrups up high, has some yellow sanitary socks, very nice. Old school, still not high enough for me though. He'll swing and miss at the first one. I used to like to have that, uh, the back leg where it went over the mid calf. You had calves? And the front, I did, yeah. <laughs> uh, and the front just right about maybe six inches above the shoe. Jeez. Is that even possible? Hmm? Is that even possible still? Well, yeah, it used to be before you guys started putting angel flight cuffs on pants, you know. Well, you see it. So that's not high See enough a little right bit. there. No, uh, it's got to be uh, a little bit higher. Carrillo chops it down the first baseline, and it'll roll foul. Make the count two and two for Gabriel Carrillo. All right. But let's see if we can get another shot of those socks, though. But he's, I don't like those. He has the socks with the high tops. Well, he, he's got <laughs> some big legs. But he's got the high tops wrapped it, well, around the ankle. That's right. I mean, they got the high so tops if he there. Had, so but you know, if he had low tops, they would look even better. That'd look better. So, show more so in other words, he should be wearing there. low tops to show that gold off. Would, yeah. that be, would that be satisfying? The high, taste? Tops, the high tops are cool, too. So he's got a little bit of the new school and the old school. The 2-2 two -two pitch is, oh, wow. <laughs> nice fastball from Hall Mendez, able to get away from Michael Jenks. Makes it a full count. Yeah, Michael Jenks' mom's sitting right behind us. And she is a big fan of the Cardinals. So full count for Gabriel Carrillo up against Juan Mendez, the Londale pitcher. Mendez giving up five runs on six hits through two innings. And the full count pitch, fastball, he strikes out Carrillo looking the second, the first strike out of the day for Juan Mendez. Mendez throwing a little bit harder this third inning than he did over the first two. Lou, so catch you up here and everybody at home. Londale. Gave up three runs in the first. Chris Weishart, Irving Franco, and Artis Perry scored. Franco scored on a suicide squeeze. And in the second, Weishart and Irving Franco scored. When inning with the Cougars had four base hits. That'll bring up Luis Polanco. Polanco tried to reach on a butt attempt in the first inning. The first pitch to him was a ball. Polanco now, he doesn't have, he has the high socks, but it says Cougars on the side. Well, that's cool. So if you, if it uh, says the, yeah, if it says the uh, Cougars there, and now see that's where I like to have the uh, the gray pants. That one almost went into the dugout, right up around the knee area. So you do have the uh, the Cougars there coming. So up when and you down have the them leg. up around the knee, you want the pants a little bit baggier, right? Mm, well, not Looks back nice. in the seventies. Oh, you want the skin tight? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The 1-1 pitch for Luis Polanco. It's called for a strike. Polanco takes down when he's down, down 1-2. Also, Luis, if you can uh, show Luis is the back of his head there. Got the shags? Got the shag coming out like the seven. Well, so does Weishar. So Weishar has a, some nice shags going. That is, that's the, been his trademark, so maybe everybody's going towards the senior there. Fouls out, uh, Polanco fouls out back, battles up there. See, but almost right, consider, that's not that's longer than a boy band cut. You know, that's almost like um, you know a, a an '80s power rock band cut. Okay, yeah, so '80s hair band. Yeah. See, if if the hair is reaching the shoulders, that's beyond shags, right? That's just long hair. Oh yeah. The one-two pitch to is a curveball and it's fouled back out of play. Polanco was up there battling. But it wouldn't, I wouldn't consider it maybe it's shaggy and not shag. I mean, uh, that's, uh, you know, that was a, a popular girl's haircut back in the back in the day, but no. Back in the day, huh? Not for a guy. So Luis Polanco, the one-two count, a fastball, and he strikes out looking. 
Juan Mendez has struck out two batters this inning, both of them looking. Gabriel Cabrillo and Luis Polanco. So Juan Mendez, after getting roughed up over the first two innings, is starting to settle down here. Looks like he's starting a little bit harder. That'll bring up the number nine batter, Joey Garcia. Garcia, who bats left-handed, is playing center field, and he wears his pants all the way down low, like, kind of like slacks. First pitch to him, he tries for a bunt. No good. Second inning, Luke Garcia, we saw him try to bunt. Didn't get it down left-handed. Switched around to the right-handed batter's box, which is what he's doing right now, and was hit. So it's no, none of that old school schoolyard where, hey, if you switch your boxes, you're out. You can do that. Well, you can do that as, as long as um, it's uh, two, str no, two strikes. Once it gets to two strikes, then, then you have, you have to, stay. to stay in that box. So that's uh, been around quite a while, as long as I can remember. Even. You know, when you're in the schoolyard playing PE, you switch back. Oh, you're out. You're out. Well, that was probably uh, when the, the guys were, you know, he could switch hit. And so, yeah, you had to kind of stretch the rules and almost, almost got hit again, didn't you? Almost got hit again. So you got to stretch those rules whenever you can. Or you make them up to your advantage, right? Like kickball, you mean? <laughs> hey, kickball has some real uh, strict rules, Lou. 1-1 one, one is the count to Joey Garcia. He's batting right-handed now. He swings and misses, and that'll sit him down. Garcia strikes out. So Juan Mendez strikes out the side here in the third inning after getting roughed up over the first two. No runs, no hits, three batters down on striking out. As Hawthorne leads Lawndale five to nothing, we head to the bottom of the third on Hawthorne Lawndale Community Cable Channel 22. Bottom of the third inning at Lawndale, Hawthorne Cougars are leading five to nothing over the Cardinals. Cardinals will send up the top of the lineup here in the bottom of the third: Anthony Zapata, Manny Salazar, and Michael Jenks. Londo's been able to get just one hit against Mike Gutierrez. has been pitching pretty well for the Cougars. He's been doing that all year long. Lou Gutierrez coming into the game had an ERA of 2.2, one and one with one complete game, and that complete game was a shutout. Well, Hawthorne has uh, had the horses on the mound, and it looks like they're going to do it again this year. As he tries for a bunt down the first baseline, Artis Perry will field it. Nobody there, and... Franco just gets over just in time. Perry feeds Franco as Zapata is called out. Almost a pretty good bunt attempt. Sure was. Uh, so the pitcher getting off the mound a little slow, Gutierrez. And uh, Artis Perry on the ball like a cat. And a good play by the second baseman, Franco, to cover and to get the speedy Zapata. Yeah, Franco was a little bit late getting there. And Zapata, you mentioned, Lou, was a speedy one. It was a good bunt right in that no man's land area. But Artis Perry jumped on it. He was playing in on the grass, able to take that away. So Manny Salazar at the plate. First pitch to Salazar, he swings and he fouls it off the right side. Hitting that building by Ken Cranes. Not that they're sponsoring us, but always good when you hit a building. Yeah, they well, can't say anything about that, but uh, Casey Crane, who now runs the ship over there, is uh, an old friend of mine. Who isn't an old friend of yours? You. <laughs> I'm a young friend of yours? Oh, you're a friend? <laughs> oh. Lou with friends like me? Who needs enemies? <laughs> Bottom of the third, Manny Salazar at the plate. He fakes a bunt and he pulls back and it's a ball outside. One and one the count now to Salazar. Well, Beto Duran, a great addition to our Channel 22 sports team, oh. also becoming a rising star on ESPN Radio 710. What about rising? As Salazar drops a bunt down on the third base, Arcinega, he's going to pick it up and bobble it. Manny Salazar will reach on a nice bunt down the third base line, the second hit of the day for the Cardinals. That was just a tough play. R.C. Nega, even if he came up cleanly with fielding it, would have to make that throw on the run. And Salazar runs well, it would have been close, but. Well, Coach May likes to stack the top of the deck here, the top of the batting order with a lot of speed, and that uh, showed off there. Yep. Michael Jenks, a left-handed batter. The catcher will step up. In the Three batter, Jenks has been a fixture here for the Cardinals, a four-year letterman. That's a big hole on the right side if he wants to hit through there. As Salazar's in motion, Jenks will drop a bunt down. Artis Perry's gonna field it, and Jenks will beat that throw down the first. So back-to-back -back bunts for the Cardinals here in the bottom of the third. Get something going now. 
Salazar drops a nice one down the third baseline, and Michael Jenks, like a lefty should, just brings the ball with him in front of the first baseline. And handling the bat very well, and uh, just like a guy down the freeway who's now the manager of the LA Angels, he could handle the bat pretty well. Didn't hit a whole lot of home runs, but could get you a base hit and some runs batted in. And a very smart player, Michael Jenks, who I believe he's uh, going to junior college next year, if I remember what his mother said. Martin Lemus at the plate, swings at the first pitch, an off-speed pitch, and misses. Lemus trying to tie this game up with one swing, even though they're down five. Hey, why not? It's a start. <laughs> Boy, if the, the, the wind's not blowing real hard right now. But to just get a solid base hit into the gaps to chase home at least one. Another off-speed pitch, another swing. This time, Lemus able to get a little bit of the ball. He's down, down 0-2. Lemus playing first for the Cardinals, the sophomore. Well, Londale's trying to get something going here. Manny Salazar is over at second, reached on a bunt down third baseline. Michael Jenks over at first, reached on a bunt down the first baseline. So this Londale team just looking, just itching to get something going. And a little bit of a funk, just can't get the lead and finish things off. Lemus fouls another one back up there battling against Mike Gutierrez. <laughs> that foul ball came awful close to a young man right down there. Lamus fly out to end the first inning to center field. So he has some pop. So you're talking about Londo not being able to get anything going. Lou, Coach May said before the game, the team batting 220. Not able to get anybody on base. Can't really manufacture any runs. Well, they got a shot here with runners at first and second here with only one out. Now Michael Gutierrez, a big kid out there on the mound. Very imposing figure. Listed at 5'10", 270 pounds, so. And also has some pretty good command of those uh, breaking balls. Yes, he's been able to mix in pretty good overhand curveball, able to keep the Londale batters honest, but he can't really sit on a fastball. And when he does, he brings it in. The 0-2 pitch, off speed, and it looks like it's to center. And coming in is Garcia, who drops it. He's going to throw to third, and that'll retire Manny Salazar. Salazar was in no man's land because he was going back because he thought that Garcia was going to catch the ball. Yeah, that's tough, especially in short center field like that. And Garcia really actually uh, gets, uh, gets a out. gift for that one. And on the fielder's choice, Lemus is over at first. Yeah, Lemus so will reach first. Jenks will move over to second. It's the same situation that Londale had with one out, but now they have it with two with Victor Gonzalez at the plate. First pitch to Gonzalez, off speed in the dirt. Gonzalez struck out in the second. Gonzalez is playing in the field for Londale. He's over in right field. And batting 160 on the season. Gonzalez grounds one to short. Weishaw over there to throw over to Arcinega the short way, and that'll end the Cardinals' small rally. But they do get two runners on base on two hits, no runs. It's still five to nothing as we head to the top of the fourth. Hawthorne five, Lawndale zero on Hawthorne Cable Communicate Channel 22. Top of the fourth inning, Hawthorne five, Lawndale zero. Juan Mendez on the mound for the Cardinals. Chris Weishar will lead off this top of the fourth for the Cougars. And with more play by play, here's the great Lou Stowers. Oh my goodness, what an intro to that. Well, thank you very much, Beto Duran. As coming up, it is the top of the order. Chris Weischer, the uh, shortstop, and doesn't look like he's got a haircut since last season, but that's see, all right. See, with that long hair, that's not shag. That's just long hair. But it looks good when you're trotting around the bases. Those are locks right there, right? Yeah. Could be as he lines it towards second base right at Zepeda for the out. So Weischer hits it hard, but right at Zepeda. So that'll be one down after. So that's the uh, first time that Weischer has been retired today at a walk and scored and a base hit and scored. And that'll bring up Franco. Irving Franco, 5'10", senior. Had two base hits and two runs scored. So the Cougars coming in 
Ocean League hasn't started yet, but the way they stack up at five and four in the preseason are in third place behind Beverly Hills and Santa Monica. And we'll get a look at Santa Monica on our Channel 22 sports schedule. And that'll be on April 3rd is when we're scheduled to hit the, that. Is that's a hit into left field and falls in front of Perez for a one out hit. So Franco's three for three for today. It's only the fourth inning. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah. As Hawthorne is just uh, kind of teeing off on Juan Mendez. It's the 10th hit of the year for Irving and Franco came into the game with only seven as RBI. So Franco is just up in his average here. That'll bring up Jesse Arseniega. Also probably the ace of this Hawthorne staff on and pitching, but now he's. Yeah, Arseniega has a 1.5 ERA. He's two and two on the year. Arseniega Lou in the first and second innings, reached on the catcher's interference in the first and the second, a big base hit that knocked in Chris Weishart and Irving Franco, giving him two RBIs. And there's a line drive up the middle and in for a base hit. Falls in front of Justin Collins as he gets it in and going over to second base is Franco. So a solid hit for Jesse. And he has two hits. Yeah. Arce Negro is leading the team and hitting. He ended the game 560 was, uh, was average. He had 14 hits. Well, the two today gives him 16 on 17 at bats. Arce Negro is just on fire to start this year. And uh, Richard Arseniega, of course, over is his big brother. And how's he doing? He's over at Harbor College playing pretty good, playing some infield for them, DHing. Artis Perry checks in, 6'2", 220-pounder, also the quarterback for the Cougars team. And uh, just hoping that he gets an offensive line to help him out. He certainly has the arm as he pops this one straight up the chute. Who's going to call it off? It's going to be Franco to put it away for the second out. So Perry going for the first pitch is now 0 for 3, was on on a fielder's choice and score back in the first inning. And that'll bring up Gutierrez. Gutierrez, Lou, in the first inning, Coach Hines went to the, you know, little feeling lucky, went to the suicide squeeze. Gutierrez is able to get the bunt down. He knocked in a run, and then he reached when Juan Mendez threw the ball away. Gutierrez Lou has just been on fire. He's been a, a big, big addition to this team as a junior. He's been 407 before the game started, and he's been a stud on the mound. Well, they sure uh, could use him right now. Actually, five nothing lead as this one's fouled back. But you know that you'd like to see this team just rack it up and see what this uh, offense can do. Jeff Hines the head coach of the Cougars, would just love to see this, this team score runs. As this is uh, my third year, your second year doing baseball for the uh, Tri-High School area. And uh, that's been the big problem. Defense hasn't been the problem, it's been scoring runs. As there's a line drive into left field and over for it is Collins to make the running catch and the highlight reel catch for the out. So two men are left in, uh, on base and uh, no run scored on two hits. And we'll go to the bottom of the fourth inning with the Cougars leading the Cardinals five to nothing. Juan Mendez will step into the batter's box against Michael Gutierrez. Five to nothing. Gutierrez leads Mendez and the Cardinals. Cardinals in their home white. And have always, they've always been uh, one of my favorite teams growing up, of course, besides the Dodgers and the Angels. Lawndale? The Lawndale Cardinals. Yeah. <laughs> this one's in on a, in for a strike. What has Mendez done today, Beto? Mendez battled Gutierrez in the second, reached on a base hit to right field. And the swinging miss on an off-speed pitch, and now it's 0-2. So Lawndale just needs to get something going. Actually, they did have something going in the bottom of the, th the third inning, but couldn't cash in the runners. Nice off-speed pitch again. Curveball drops in on the inside part of the plate to just strike out Mendez. Now, that's the first one that I've recorded. How many does uh, Michael have? Michael has only two strikeouts. He's real 
real good quality control pitcher includes everybody else on the in the game. Gets a lot of pop-ups. That brings up Jose Almanza. Almanza, the shortstop for the Cardinals, bounces this one as Arseniega picks it up and throws it, and Perry picks it out of the dirt. That was a tough play by Arseniega. He coming in, it was a slow chopper, and then it hit a patch of grasser, and it kind of kicked away from him. Reached back behind him, picked it up, and made a good, strong throw. And Lou Gutierrez don't want to cheat him now. He has three strikeouts in the second, in the first inning on the second batter. Struck out Salazar. Catcher threw it away, so the KE2, you know, your favorite friend of the catcher. That's right. I'll actually just like to get it done without having to throw it down to first base. Is so Jesse's E2s are bad, right? Oh, yeah. If you're the two? Any E. If you're the two, it's a bad. Because then you have your pitcher looking at you like, man, I just worked that hard, strike that guy out, and you throw it away. And this one is bounced to third base. Arseniega picks it up again and makes a nice throw this time right at the navel of Perry to throw him out. So 5-3 on the put out and three up and three down for the Cardinals. And Michael Gutierrez is just sailing along after giving up a couple of hits in the last inning. And we go into the fifth inning with our score five to nothing. Cardinals trailing the Cougars. And it is the top of the fifth inning. Hawthorne up against Lawndale right now. Jonathan Sepulveda, Gabriel Carrillo, and Luis Palanco. And they will face Juan Mendez in his fourth inning of work. Or check that, fifth inning of work. Sepulveda, nice, big, lanky kid. Jonathan is listed as six foot, 200. He looks a little bit more like six one or six two. But uh, Jonathan up there, that's a nice break for Jesse Arseniega because Jesse was one of the catchers on this team. Yeah, and Zapoda, so one of his knocks on him was he wasn't able to hit as well. Well, he's come out on fire this year. He's been 360 to start off early on through the first nine games. That's five RBIs on the season, 10 hits, so it's supposed to starting to pick it up. Well, that's good because uh, that shows that uh, the young man worked a long, hard summer, and that's good. Had a good off season then. And he, what he does up there, Lou, what he's doing exactly right now is 3-0, and now it's 3-1, he's up there working and battling the, the pitchers, just what a catcher should do to make the other pitcher tired and get deep into the counts. That's right, just make him work, just right on his back there, and now it's full at two. Three and two. Notice that Mendes, it looks like Mendes throwing a little bit harder, Lou. The first couple innings, he was just trying to get the ball in there. Now he's just firing and letting it go. Nice off-speed pitch by Mendez to get Sepulveda. He was down three and oh, and then three straight strikes to get him swinging. And that's uh, strikeout number four for Juan Mendez. So, it appears, uh, ex except for the first two innings, which obviously I wasn't here, was uh, on assignment getting over here, but uh, and also that 405, you can see it on the southbound side from one of our camera angles. It's, it's just awful today. But uh, it appears, Beto, that had a couple of wobbly innings in the first and second inning as this one goes off of the bag, uh, glove of Salazar, and in at first is Carrillo, who really smashed that one down there on the infield hit. Real, hit a little screamer down the third baseline. Manny Salazar did his best to get in front of it. It just went off his glove. It's a base hit for Carrillo. But yeah, Lou, you were mentioning the, um, the first couple innings. Mendez wasn't wild or erratic. He just he started the game off walking Washoe with four straight, and then Hawthorne gave him a lot of credit. He strained a lot of hits together, able to get going, advanced the runner, and it wasn't spectacular. Mendez hasn't been hit hard, but it's just... Hawthorne has done what they, what they always do, which is put ball in play, get some contact, and then next to you or a couple runs score. Go looks to like your strength. Eight like men came to bat in the first inning. Looks like Tony Lee's going to be hitting now for Luis Polanco. Polanco was 0 for 2. So Tony Lee, the six foot senior coming in. He's having a tremendous year also. 458 on the year. 
11 for 24, seven ribbies. Nice left-handed stroke. And why not? Got to get everybody in the game because right around the corner, Ocean League action is going to start for these Cougars. As they have Palos Verdes Peninsula, Santa Monica is uh, the starting point, and that's going to be next uh, Friday. You see Lee Lula talking about everybody, everybody has their different style of baseball players. He's got the nice baggy pants. That's it. That's the uh, Manny Ramirez style. That's a uh, slung low. <laughs> then Carrillo, on the other hand, has a nice the pants really high at first. And this one's the other way, going down the left field line. And that is a fair ball as Polanco has to check check that. Perez has to chase that into the corner. And it's going to be a stand-up double for Tony Lee. So Lee just took that the other way. Mendez put it on the outside part of the plate just above the belt. And Tony Lee belted it down the left field line. It's been one of those kind of days for Mendez. It was a good pitch on the outside, exactly where you want to have it. Lee just went with the pitch and took it the other way for his third double of the year. And that'll bring up Joey Garcia, who was hit by a pitch and was uh, struck down seven uh, to, uh, catcher to, to uh, second base and then struck out back in the third inning. So now Jeff Hines is uh, wants to talk. He looks like he's going to pinch hit for Joey Garcia. And Garcia, of course, doesn't like that late decision. So let's see who uh, Coach Hines puts in. Coach Hines is one of those guys who doesn't put up with a whole lot of guff. Looks like Luis Hernandez will get his first varsity at bat for the Cougars. He's the backup catcher to J.P. Sepulveda. He <laughs> get the cheer from the, his teammates, like, all right, Hernandez is in there. But he has done some pitch running. He scored two runs. So his first official varsity at bat. And it's right here, lucky number 13 on channel 22. It's not bad, Luis. You first that bad and you, on TV. That's right, just a freshman. Going up against Juan Mendez. First varsity strike is a uh, hello, Mr. Luis. Let's call some cheese on that. Mendez bring a little bit extra oomph to that pitch. Has runners in scoring position, and this is quite a situation for a young man. And here comes the squeeze. This one's popped straight up as Jinx just can't get to it as the communication just didn't get to him that it was behind him. Because you know Michael would have would have dove for it and done a swan dive to get that ball. Yes, he would have. Just never couldn't recognize where it was at right away. And Coach Hines, the third <laughs> time he's tried to squeeze, the one time successful, Tried it with Sepulveda, and he thought it went off. But this is a freshman in a varsity game with runners in scoring position. No better time to learn than now. That's right. you got to throw the kid in the fire with his shoes off. Pitch out, and that's a ball. So Luis Hernandez trying to score at least one with one out in the top of the fifth inning and a 5 nothing lead for the Cougars. This one's slapped the other way and it's flagged down. Actually, it's stopped by Zapata. In to score is Carrillo. Here comes a throw that gets away from Jenks and down to second base goes Hernandez as Lee and Carrillo score and it's seven to nothing Cougars. Luis Hernandez was brought in First varsity at bat and to drop a squeeze down and get a run, get one RBI. Well, that base hit right there, he knocks in two with two strikes. A big time at bat for Luis Hernandez. And that's a good way to start your varsity career. A base hit with a pressure situation and two RBIs. Try just slapped it towards second base and it almost got through if it wasn't for the nice stop by Anthony Zapata. And it looks like Juan Mendez has been knocked out of the game by Luis Hernandez. You're gonna have a new pitcher. And we'll find out who that is as soon as we get that for you. Is that number eight on the back there? It looks like it's number nine. Number nine is on the mound. And of course, we don't have a number nine. Number eight's Juan Mendez. Number 10 is Collins. 
And uh, well, if you want to walk over to the dugout, I'll we'll find out who that is. Or we can ask our fantastic baseball mom, Ms. Jinx. We'll find out. Michael Jenks' mom knows everybody. Kyle Calhoun. <laughs> number nine, Kyle. Kyle Calhoun, who normally wears number 13, or is listed as number 13, is wearing number nine. So get an assist from Mama Jenks. Want to thank her for that. So Calhoun on the year. Let's check out his numbers, Beto. Yep. Kyle Calhoun in pitching has a 12.0 ERA in two and a third innings. Has faced 12 batters and has given up four earned runs and five hits to those 12 batters, three doubles, has walked one and struck out two. So Kyle still learning how to do things. Is a 5'9 freshman, so talk about being put into the fire. But he is a left-hander as he faces the veteran Chris Weischer. Chris, one of the nicest kids you'd ever want to meet. Foul tips. And uh, Tom Strick Fadden, the, the genius behind the curtain, reminds us that Chris was one of the players of the game. Was that last year, genius? Yes, it was last okay. year. Okay. Oh, not you, genius. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's Mr. Genius to you. It was a rough day for Juan Mendez, Lou. He went four and one-third innings, gave up seven runs on eight hits, struck out four, walked one, and hit one. Better days ahead for Juan as the Pioneer League will open up for them soon as well. This one's high for ball three, three and oh. So Lawndale faces North at North to open up Pioneer League action. That will be on April 4th. And uh, North just beat Hawthorne the other day by two runs. So those teams across the 405 are tough. This one's lifted in the air down the left field line. Back goes Perez, and this one goes foul. Chris Weischer showing some pop. I guess he must have heard that Tom said he was the player of the game last year, trying to, you know, cement his way here with the looking for his first home run. Well, you know, you want to get it down that line, and with the way the wind blows, if you can get it up in the air and give it enough of a hook, who knows, maybe to look around that foul pole. Well, Weischer has shown some pop. He has a two doubles, one triple. So three and one to Weischer, who has two runs in his pocket, Walked in the first inning, had a base hit in the second. This one bounces and run over second. Hernandez stays put. That's three and one now. Thought it was three and one, but it's three and one now. There's a three and two. It's three and one. Three and one. We actually have a scoreboard here in the South Bay area and a baseball diamond that works. I shouldn't say that, the one over at Hawthorne works. Guess they uh, found some batteries for it in the back room somewhere. Then Weisher takes his second walk of the day. So for Kyle, and that's his first walk from his first batter. Calhoun trying more than likely to be turned into a pitcher. That may not be his first preference out in the field. But if, as long as you're a left-hander, the baseball gods say you must go on the mound. What's that line about lefties? If you're living, you're breathing, and you're lefty, you can get a job? If you are still warm, you will be <laughs> a millionaire. If you wake up on the green side of the grass, you will be a millionaire. That'll bring up Irving Franco, who I'm sure will be a millionaire someday in whatever he decides to do. And he lifts it into short right center field. And back for it goes Zapata, and he puts it away for out number two. That'll bring up Jesse Arseniega, who's been busy today, not only out at third base for the Cougars, but at the plate. 
has been on three ba uh, on base all three times, two hits, and has gotten as far as second base. Now he has an RBI opportunity with Hernandez out at second base over at first base is Weischer. Jenks lets this one go off the heel of his glove and everybody moves up 90 feet. Weischer to second and down to third base is Luis Hernandez. Now, I'm going to give uh, Michael a pass ball on that. The only reason, Beto, is because he got into a stance like he was going to throw somebody out, but there was nobody to throw out to because, uh, well, they might have put on a double steal with Hernandez. And definitely with Weischer out there, this one's bounced over to third base. Salazar picks it up and throws on to first for the out, and that's going to end the fifth inning for Hawthorne. 5-3 on the put out. They send seven men to the plate and get two runs on three hits. They leave a couple going into the bottom of the fifth inning. Hawthorne leading Lawndale seven to nothing. Back here at Lawndale High School, Justin Collins is the bottom of the order, and then it'll be the top of the order, Anthony Zepeda and Manny Salazar against Michael Gutierrez. Big guy, kicks back, rocks and deals, a fastball on the outside corner for a strike. Gutierrez has been having a masterful afternoon here today, has uh, three strikeouts on the day. And another strike, strike two, Justin Collins. Justin has only been up once, and what did he do today so far? Justin Collins grounded out to the second baseman, Irving Franco, to end the second inning, Lou. So it's 0-2 to Collins. And swings and just barely gets a piece of that one as he was fooled on the off-speed pitch that Gutierrez threw to him. So Justin, a star on the gridiron on that field that you see beyond the right field fence and also did pretty good on the basketball to this team this year. So a three-letter year for Justin Collins and Gutierrez humbles him a little bit with that strikeout number four. Collins for only Michael. a freshman, right? I think this is it for uh, for Justin. He's a senior. Oh, he's a senior. Six one. But uh, really, really improved on the football team, and it was uh, uh, kind of a rough year for him, injuring his his hand as Zapata taps it out in front of the plates as Sepulveda makes sure that thing stays foul. Kick it foul, right? <laughs> That's it. As soon as that thing goes on the right side of the chalk, or the or the the foul side of the chalk, you either kick it out of the way or you pick it up. Because that batter is running full bore down to first base, and you don't want to give them any advantage. Count, I believe, is, is 0-1. Another bunt try, and that's low. One down. And I believe it's one and one now. One and one the count to Anthony Zapata. And that one is outside, two and one. So Zapata, trying to make himself as small as he can, is 0 for 2. Flied out to left field and was out on a bunt attempt. And this one is slapped down the right field line. And that goes foul. So now it's two and two to Anthony Zapata. Anthony coming into today's ball game, batting 286. Man, I just can't believe the luck we've been having with the weather in the past couple of days. It's just beautiful. And Anthony slaps it towards second base, and on a bounce, Franco throws it over to Perry for the second out. 
So 4-3 on the putout. That'll bring up Manny Salazar. Yeah, Manny struck out in the first inning, able to reach on the air by the catcher, Jonathan Sepulveda. Got a base hit in the third. And that's been it. And got all the way to second base and was stuck in no man's land back in the third inning. Only three hits on the day against Gutierrez for the Cardinals. And Salazar has one of them. Two of those hits came in the third inning. That's really been it. That's been the big threat of the afternoon by Lawndale as this one's bounced down and over the glove of Arsen Yega. And in left field for a base hit. So a two out hit for Salazar. And the Cardinals are still in business. And Michael Jenks needs to come up with a two out something to <laughs> keep the inning going. over there fixing that patch of grass as the ball just hit. It hit that lip and it just bounced right over the head of Arsen Yega. He was waiting for that nice soft hop to come at him when he had one that just went way over his head. Well, that, uh, the rim of the grass is usually the uh, grisliest part, if you will, of the well, infield Arsene grass. knows exactly what that means right now. <laughs> so Michael Jenks trying to get something going. Has a hit in two at-bats and also was on on the fielder's choice. As he was on on a bunt single back in the third inning. So Manny Salazar over at first, two outs, bottom of the fifth inning. As Jenks looks down at Kevin May. Left-handed hitting catcher is always nice. Oh, there's, those guys are gold. Sepulveda coming out of his crouch waiting for something to happen. This one's grounded up the middle, stopped by Weischer and makes the put out on a nice play by Chris Weischer to help end the inning. So six to four on the put out. And Chris Weischer puts the uh, kibosh on Lawndale's bid to keep the inning going. So no runs on a hit and a man left going into the top of the sixth inning. Seven to nothing. Cougars over the Cardinals on Channel 22 Sports. Artis Perry's going to th lead things off for the Cardinals, followed by Michael Gutierrez and Jonathan Sepulveda. Score 7 to nothing. Cougars in complete control of this one. Kind of like the uh, traffic is in complete control of the southbound 405 over the <laughs> fence there. There's just nowhere else to go. You got If you got to get there, you got to get on that thing. Artis Perry trying to give the ball a ride as Kyle Calhoun pitches a strike. And that's what Kyle has to do. I mean, you're down seven to nothing. Just go out there and throw strikes. Juan Mendez went four and a third, gave up seven runs on eight hits. And then just got whacked in the back of the head by a tail. <laughs> got a golden retriever out here who's, who's assaulting us with his you tail. You the game's gone to the dogs? <laughs> Almost gone to the Cougars, I think. As Perry grounds it to third, picked up by Salazar, who throws him out. Nice stretch over there by Lemus. So Perry, 0 for 4. And that'll bring up Michael Gutierrez. What a game he's had, Beto. Through five innings, has given up no runs on four hits and struck out four. So a good overall game for Michael Gutierrez. Gutierrez has been impressive, Lou. We're gonna see a lot of him this year with the bat and the glove, especially on the mound though. 5'10", 270 pound junior. Saw the football coach here earlier today. Former Marine, Hua. So a foul at the plate, and this one is about 62 feet. To the left. So one and one to Gutierrez, who was on on an error and was stranded at second in the two uh, three run first inning, and then had a base hit back in the second. Did that knock in a run? No, his RBI came in the first on that squeeze play when he brought in Irving Franco. And was stranded at second, and then lined out on a nice catch by Franco. 
at second base, and this one's foul tipped into the glove of Jinx. One and two. This one's fouled off. When you look at the the figure, if you will, of Michael Gutierrez, it reminds you of either Fernando Valenzuela or a pitcher that started off in the Dodgers organization. And uh, this one's bounced in the dirt as well. It remains two and two. Sid. El Sid. What was his last name? The the Hawaiian five zero Hernand or Hernando or Sid Fernandez. Sid Hernandez or Fernandez. Sid Fernandez. Sid. Top of the sixth inning. Seven to nothing and swung on a miss, gets away from Jinx. Jinx picks it up, throws and gets him. Strikeout two, three, so Kyle Calhoun gets his first strikeout. Michael Jinx. Will be, uh, <coughs> calling for a track star anytime soon, but that was still a nice play by Michael Jinx. Now they got his running in for got, the day. Got the, the running in, yeah. Pitchers have to get their running in every day. Javier Cepeda will be coming up for the Cougars to replace uh, J.P. Sepulveda. Another big catcher wearing number 19, Javier, 5'11", 190, just a sophomore. Perfect this year, one for one. Now you got to wonder if he's related to any to... Uh, The other Zapata on the team. No, actually, uh, on, on Lawndale, Anthony Zapata. Distant cousins. Swung on a miss, and that one squirts out of the glove of Jinx. So Jonathan Sepulveda's day is in the books. Was one for three, had a base hit back in the first inning. Javier holds that bat away from his body, straight up and down stance. Kyle Calhoun, the freshman on the mound for the Cardinals, kicks and deals. Nice breaking ball, that gets away from Jinx, and Jinxy is having a busy day behind the plate. But second strikeout for Calhoun. Strikeout 2-3, and that does it for Hawthorne in the top of the sixth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and two strikeouts for Kyle Calhoun. Go into the bottom of the sixth. Still the same. Cougars lead the Cardinals seven to nothing on Channel 22 Sports. Seven nothing. Cardinals coming up to bat and trailing Hawthorne. And Beto, well, you got some defensive changes for us. Yeah, with Calhoun coming in to pitch for Londale, Juan Mendez, the pitcher, went over to second. Manny Perez, who was the left, is out, and Calhoun will take his spot in the eighth. It'll be Martin Lemus, Victor Gonzalez, and Juan Mendez for the Cardinals. And the first one is on the inside part of the plate, away, or in on Lemus for a ball. Martin is 0 for 2, was on on a fielder's choice, and he really rips this one into right field. Actually, it was snagged by Artis Perry for the lineout. So Artis... Doing a good job on the defensive side. That's one down for Victor Gonzalez, That's who is 0 for 2. Struck out in the second and was on on a fielder's choice back in the third. That's the kind of day Londo's had where they do make contact. They hit a rope down the line and Artis Perry's there right at him. Then they have to move. Lemus is out. Well, you got to give uh, credit to Gutierrez. He's making him hit the ball, but his fielders are making the plays. As This one has popped down the in foul territory and just... Not to quite get in there, not enough room for Carrillo. Yeah, just went over our cameraman Francisco down there who, I don't know, I think he was running or was it the alpha? I don't know who it was. Francisco and the rest of the camera people fear no men. Or any baseball. Except Eric. Everybody fears Eric. Well, Eric's the only the one that's out of play, but he flinches when the ball is hit. Unless it's got ketchup on it. 
So Gonzalez, 0 and 1, looks at the ball inside. 1 and 1. So Hawthorne could do some damage this year in the Ocean League. Just looking at, you get to Santa Monica at 5 and 2, Beverly Hills at 6 and 3. This one's low and outside for a ball, 2 and 1. And you look at the totals, and Hawthorne has really held their opponents down uh, to 22 runs. They've scored 42, even though they lost 6-4 to four to North, as this one's bounced to second base, picked up by Franco, and he tosses it over to Perry. That'll bring up Juan Mendez, who started the game on the mound. And... Just like yesterday, the, the Cardinals had some good pitching, but to their opponent, Losinger, made them pay for the mistakes. And same thing the Cougars are doing here. They've struck, struck together a couple of hits, a couple of runners, and next thing you know, it's seven nothing, and Juan Mendez is usually a reliable pitcher. He's knocked around. Grounded to second base, bobbled by Franco, and does recover in time to get it over to Perry for the third out. So three up and three down for the Cardinals in the sixth inning, who just can't seem to get anything put together against Michael Gutierrez today. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning, or I checked that, the top of the seventh inning. Cougars coming up to bat against Kyle Calhoun and the Cardinals on Channel 22 Sports, and the Cougars lead 7 nothing. Top of the seventh inning, 7 nothing. Cougars over the Cardinals, and the batter wearing number seven on his jersey. Fouls this, or check, check that, sends it down the line, and it is foul. Now it's 0-2 to Tim O'Neill. And Beto, what do you know about Mr. O'Neill? O'Neill banging 3.33 in four games, but one for three. is That's how he got that average. One run scored and one walk. Where's number seven, Tim O'Neill? A lot of famous ball players wearing number seven. Steve Yeager for the Dodgers wore number seven. Mickey? Yeah, Mickey Mantle, some guy named Mantle. One and two, and how about Kyle Calhoun after his first inning of work has come on to strike out a couple of batters. <coughs> well, that'd be a great shot if we had a camera four. With only three Perfect. cameras. I didn't bring my Polaroid. Uh -oh. We have that, I think there's something on top of that Northrop building with that ball. That's where our fourth camera is at. There you go. <laughs> they should make that into a baseball out there as this one's popped into left field. So what uh, other sevens are there, Lou? Yeah. Excuse me? What other sevens? You have Jaeger, you have Mickey Mantle. <sighs> you know, I'm just trying to think. Which seven. is hard for me right now. Seinfeld won, uh, George Consanza the one to name his kid seven. I, I I never got into Seinfeld. Never. Never did. For as many reruns there are, you don't get into it? No. <laughs> you know when I when well, I watched it, whenever I tried a... whenever I tried to watch it, it just seemed like people were yelling at each other. Ah, oh, it's perfect. They're, they're New Yorkers, but the Constanza was a, a Mantle fan and he said his perfect name for his first kid would be Seven. Are you t saying you're an anti-Seinfeld guy? I don't know because, well, actually, yeah, because, like I said, all, all they were doing was yelling at each other. If I wanted to do that, I'd just but go you, down the street and listen not to the, the folks down there yell at each other. You're not anti-Dentai. Anti-Dentai? Yeah, there was a episode where he was against dentists. He goes, you're an anti-Dentai. Okay, <laughs> now you know why I didn't watch it. This has popped into short left field, but coming on quick and making the catch. Let's see. Uh, yep. As Zepeda in left field for Perez makes a nice diving catch on O'Neill's pop fly into short left field. Anthony Zepeda running it hard on a short pop up, gave up the body and nice play, robbing Tim O'Neill of his second hit of the year. And there we get the replay. You see him running in hard, 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 and they're just going to give his body up at the last second. And he, nice play, nice camera work. Tony Lee coming up and smashes this one to first, picked up by Lemus, and he's going to do it himself. So that's two outs. 
Good job by Lima staying with that ball. That had hit the lip and another big bounce. This time at Lima's, who was down low expecting the nice grounder. And go with it. Yeah, this, this field will get into shape. And uh, for Tony Lee, he was one for two, had a double and scored back in the fifth inning. That'll bring up Luis Hernandez. Let's check that. No, that's yeah. not Luis yeah. Hernandez. Joey that's Garcia. Joey Garcia. Re enters. I see so. you have that re entry rule where if you're a starter, somebody can pinch it for you and you can go back in the next field. Well, that rule is nice, especially now when you want to get to see how a kid will react to a situation like Luis Hernandez, who got a base hit. And Lou, I just got hit by that tail. That dog got me. Again. Assault by a golden retriever. <laughs> Got to ask her a question here as soon as we get the crowd, a huge crowd here at Lawndale High School today watching the watching the game. So Joey Garcia waiting for the pitch, and Kyle Calhoun, that's like a cricket pitch, isn't it? Where it hits the ground first. That hit the ground. Now, ma'am, do you, does your furniture over three feet high in your house because of your dog? Oh, okay, so it kind of cleans off the coffee table after people come over <laughs> and bruises people's legs as this one's fouled back. Pretty dog, or a handsome dog. <laughs> that is Lou Stowers, who will be hosting the... Good dog, good dog. The Kennel Club. Hey, I'm a dog guy. I'm not Best a cat in show. guy. Best in the show, Lou Stowers. Used to raise bulldogs. Did you ever put your dogs in the show, Lou? Uh, Did you go out there running around with the suit? We should have had Pebbles in the show. Pebbles, that's your dog? Mm -hmm. Okay. A female English bulldog. Why do people wear suits and run that way with their dogs? Why not? <laughs> Got to impress the judges. You're not going to run around in shorts. But Especially the way some of those dog handlers look. I, okay, so those handlers run around, and then the judges just come out, and they just point. You, you, you run around with your dog, and a judge just comes out and says, you, 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 come here. Pretty much. Do those dogs it's know where they're the at? Judge. Oh, they're smart. They know. So that dog knows there's somebody looking at them. Sure they do. Oh, yeah. They are they are just at the top of their game. They're entertainers, just like you. <laughs> you work for food. Yeah. And treats. Usually the other way around. Kyle Calhoun pitches it high, and that's a – is a walk for Joey Garcia, and that keeps the seventh inning alive. First walk of the day given up. Second, second walk of the day given up by Calhoun. That brings up the top of the order. Chris Weischer will get another shot at it. Is one for two with a couple of walks. Was the first batter that Calhoun faced, and this one is grounded or popped up or grounded into left field for a base hit for Weischer. So he is two for three. Good game for Chris Weischer, two for three, two runs scored. Up in his average some more. Weischer came in kind of down, been only 222, but a game like this will definitely boost that up. So the Cardinals have gotten the Cougars only twice in order this game. And this one's popped up into short left field. And coming on is Zapata to put it away for the third out of the seventh inning. So the Cougars were knocking on the door again, but Kyle Calhoun comes on to stop them. So no runs on a hit and two men left as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Last call for the Cardinals as they trail the Cougars seven to nothing. Bottom of the seventh inning, Cardinals last shot at Michael Gutierrez and the Cougars. It'll be the bottom of the order as uh, we have a pinch hitter for Jose Almanza. Looks like it's going to be Bobby Mercado. And then Calhoun spot and Justin Collins. Strike thrown in to Mercado. Bobby Mercado, 5'11", junior, listed as a designated hitter. 
and hits it right back to Gutierrez, and that's one down. So Michael Gutierrez has scattered four hits today. Is working on that four hit shutout. Trying to get to a second shutout of the year, his second complete game, he's two outs away from that. Steven Clark steps in for his first at bat. Clark, the 5'10 junior outfielder. And has no hits in eight at bats, but has scored a run and is credited with an RBI. Another big kid, as he's listed at 5'10", looks a little taller than that. Here comes Gutierrez's pitch, and that's fouled at the plate. So 0-1 to Clark. Gutierrez has just been, I guess, masterful is the word today, Beto. As he's allowed the hits and looks very nimble out there on the mound still and looks down at the home plate umpire and says, uh, where was that, sir? He hasn't missed much. Gutierrez is better than advertised. Came in and just really shut down this Cardinal team. Right down the middle, one and two. So with one out and nobody on for the Cardinals, Michael Gutierrez just says, okay, it's time just to get this thing over with and go home. Michael Gutierrez coming in. This is to show you uh, how good Gutierrez is, is that's fouled back, still one and two. Gutierrez, out of the four starting pitchers on this team, Gutierrez is at the bottom of the list with an average of 2.21 in 19 innings coming in. Add seven runs to that, and that ERA now is right around two, because that's a ball two and two. Yeah, the Cardinals' strength this year is going to be their pitching. They ha they can hit, but their pitching is going to be their key to, if they want to advance far in league action. And this one's hammered into the gap in left field, and that's going to fall in for a base hit. So that gives the home faithful something to cheer about. That's only the fifth hit given up by Gutierrez. Gutierrez just hung that pitch, one of the rare mistakes he's made today. He's been able to get that off-speed pitch in for strikes, and that one just left it hanging. Clark did the smart thing, just sit back, sit back, and drive it, go with that pitch, and he's on for the fifth hit of the day for the Cardinals. That'll bring up the quarterback, Justin Collins, stepping in from the left-handed batter's box. A wide open side of the infield for him to pull the ball through. Struck out looking back in the fifth inning, and Bounced out to the second baseman in the third. Let's check that the second. But Justin looked like he was going the other way as Gutierrez was uh, pitching him that way. There's no cough drops in there, big fella. We got Fido over here again. <laughs> Checking out for snacks, seeing if there's any Scooby snacks you some, around. You got some bologna in your pocket or what? So Gutierrez obviously was not real happy with the way the uh, at bat went for Stephen Clark. Throws over there to try to pick him off and end this thing. Gutierrez coming into today's ball game with only one strikeout, has four today. And Collins reaches for it and fouls it back. Count is one and one, I believe. I think it's one, two, Lou. One and two. So this is match point. High, ball two. So Gutierrez is trying to challenge Collins. Let's see if he'll just put it right down the middle and try to put this one away. Here comes the 2-2, two -two, or 1-2, and that's fouled back. Collins up there battling with a 2-2 two -two count. Been able to foul off a couple. So two out, one on. Check that, one out. And one on for Justin Collins. 
Bounces this one towards the hole at second base and bobbled by Franco. And safe at first base is Justin Collins. So Collins battling Gutierrez. And now maybe uh, Michael Gutierrez could be running out of gas a little bit. But again, that was one of his patented ground ball pitches. It was a ground ball, it was a perfect setup. Just Franco booted it. Collins able to reach on the air. But now this is where Gutierrez can really settled down and, and battled up where he is on the ropes a little bit. Runners on the bases and he's able to just been shut down the Cardinals. See if that got his attention a little bit as Zapata squares around a bunt. It's a ball. And Zapata fakes throwing down to Artis Perry. So this will be an interesting little battle here. Let's see if the, what Anthony has up his sleeve. Bunts it right out in front of the mound. It gets by everybody and everybody's going to be safe because Michael Gutierrez couldn't get over there in time with Franco covering, and the bases are loaded with Cardinals. That's just an excellent push button by Anthony Zapata. The way you teach, you want to bunt it towards the second baseman hard enough where he gets past the pitcher, and that's exactly what it did. That's no man's land. If Gutierrez able to get it, he's still going to have to pick it up and throw it, and he's not going to get him. Anthony Zapata could just fly down the line. Good bunt by him. And this is a terrific opportunity for Manny Salazar, who has two hits in three at-bats and has been on base three times. And he hits it off the end of the bat or off the handle, and nobody's covering first base, and that breaks the goose egg. Cardinals finally get on the board, trails 7-1 to one on the infield hit and RBI by Manny Salazar, his third hit of the day. Gutierrez just thought that ball was through. He was looking in the outfield, but he didn't realize that the second baseman, Frankel, covered a lot of ground, got over there, but Gutierrez didn't cover the the base after, as Arthur Perry also went after it. There goes the shutout. That's right, so that is a sign of fatigue. It's in the bottom of the seventh inning, and you're just not thinking a little clearly out there. Definitely, Gutierrez, whether he knew it or not, should have gone over there to cover the bag. Yeah, no matter what, if that ball's there, you still gotta run over there and cover that bag. Now Michael Jenks it comes up with an opportunity. And he hits this one hard, but right at Artis Perry. Artis says he's gonna take him himself, and that's the ball game. Now check that, no, that's two down. Two runs. Pardon me, two runs is coming in on the uh, infield ground out is Justin Collins. And on the fielder's choice, No fielder's choice. Uh, three you, Michael Jenks, will go also. down. Three unassisted. That'll bring up Martin Lemus. Who's the over three. give up the shutout, but he still has a chance for the complete game. They were two outs. Seven to two. Oh, he'll definitely get the uh, the complete game. He's wiping his, eye, his brow this time. He look, looks like he lost a little bit of speed. Seven innings, a long, a lot of pitches. Throwing a lot of pitches today, yeah. Reaches back and throws a fastball, picked up by Franco, throws it to Perry, and that is the ball game. But the Cardinals show a lot of heart by getting two runs on four hits, and they leave two. And the final score, Hawthorne seven, Lawndale two. Well, it was a terrific game for the Hawthorne Cougars and especially Michael Gutierrez, who goes seven innings for the win. And for Gutierrez, he now improves his record to two and one. And Juan Mendez is the loser for the Cardinals. And for Juan, his record will fall to one and two. We'll be back with more particulars after this. Again, the final score from Lundale High School, Cougars bite the Cardinals 7-2. Seven to two is the final score. Hawthorne Cougars over the Lawndale Cardinals. Seven runs and 14 hits for Hawthorne. Two runs and eight hits for the Cardinals. The winning pitcher, Michael Gutierrez, two and one, gave up uh, two runs on eight hits and struck out four. Had his hit total double in that uh, final inning, the seven inning, had only given up four 
scattered for throughout that game, but then started to run out of gas in that seventh and final inning. Juan Mendez, the hard luck loser, drops to one and two, four in a third inning, seven runs on eight hits, and struck out four, walked one and hit a man. Kyle Calhoun went two and two thirds and uh, gave up a couple of runs himself and uh, also struck out three in that in his uh, two and a two thirds. So Beto, uh, what it was your what was your impression of this game? I think that Hawthorne has found himself another stud pitcher. Michael Gutierrez was just impressive, able to shut down the Cardinals from the very first pitch. And the numbers that you mentioned, Lou, he was. If you look at his numbers, he's the worst pitcher on this Hawthorne squad. Mm -hmm. He actually looked like an ace today. Sure did. And uh, well, if he can keep that uh, stamina up to get that to complete game going. It seems like Jeff Hines likes those horses that can go seven innings. So. Seven innings, two runs, eight hits, four strikeouts, and the best part about it, he mixes up that fastball with the off-speed pitch, and he's just able to locate that pitch. Only walked with one batter, and you gotta love that as a coach when you only see one, and that was a full count that he really battled up there. So Gutierrez is really a star in the making for the Cougars. That's right, and also did pretty well with the bat. Had a, a base hit and an RBI. And on the squeeze play, right? And then another base hit in the uh, second inning. And uh, so that's uh, that to me, that, that adds up to player of the game honors. Sure does. First appearance on Channel 22, Michael Gutierrez is your player of the game. Impressive debut for uh, him. All right, so, well thank you very much for joining us on Channel 22 Sports production of the Game of the Week where we bring you the best in South Bay action. But no matter what sport it is, girls or boys, we're happy to bring it to you. We will see you on Monday when we will be back here at Lawndale High School when the Olympians come to town. And uh, well, it was a tough battle for Lawndale getting beat up by the Olympians on our first broadcast, our baseball broadcast. But Lawndale is just, just that hard luck team that just can't seem to, they got one piece of the puzzle missing. You know, one piece of the puzzle. They have some good pitching. We saw Mendez and Calhoun today. They just really need to get the bats going coming to the game. They were back at only 220, couldn't get any runners on. But then they had that life at the bottom of the seventh. If they need to get that life consistently throughout the game, they could give Losinger a chance, uh, a fight for that game. Well, Beto, I want to thank you. And I also want to thank Tom Strick Fadden, the genius, and also this uh, genius crew. And the super genius is that, well, that's what they drive. That's the van. The production van is the super genius, or actually it's the battle tank. But I uh, want to thank you for joining us on Channel 22 Sports all year long. And once again, the final score from Lawndale High School, Hawthorne Cougars over the Lawndale Cardinals, 7-2. to two. Until next time, so long. <laughs>